I'm Jennifer from Gen W Arts, and in today's video I'm going to play around with an art supply I haven't tried before but heard a lot about, so that's very exciting. Um, this video was made possible by Magicfly, who was kind enough to reach out to me to ask if I wanted to try any of their products, so yeah, they sent me this particular uh, art supply and I'm happy to share with you what it is and what my findings of it are, so I hope you enjoy. And here it is, the package they kindly sent me. And it turned out to be a gouache paint set with 24 paints. On the back of the box it shows you what colors are in there and there are some usage tips and storage tips. And here is the box. It also came with three brushes that seemed kind of nice. So I'm going to use them in today's video as well. And just for transparency, I did not get paid or sponsored to make this video review. They just kindly sent me these art supplies to play with. And now I'm going to open this container, which was quite a struggle because it was super tight to get the lid and open. And wow, they're jelly gouaches. That's really something new. I never tried these, only just uh, regular tube gouaches. So in the bottle, uh, there's a hole you can press with your finger through to get them out easily. And each cup has the, uh, the, the color name on it and uh, the pigment information is even on there too. Uh, it also contained a little leaflet that had some tips and uh, yeah how to store them and how long they're going to be good for. Um, so yeah here I opened them all and they look so delicious. Look at all those beautiful colors. Wow. I was really super excited to try these paints out after opening them. Just They just look so pretty. You can pretty much use them right off the bat. The only thing you need to do is stir them thoroughly because there is some glycerin laying on top of it. So you have to mix it in with the paint before you use it. Before I start painting, I swatch out each individual color. It's something I do with every new art supply I get just to get familiar with the colors and with the material itself. I found some of the colors were a bit more transparent than the others, especially the purple and the greens, but this is not uncommon for a lot of art supplies. I find swatching out your colors is just a very handy thing to do as it gives you a very nice uh, color reference once you're starting to paint. And now it's time to start with the project. I started sketching out a kitty. I had a lot of trouble deciding what I wanted to draw for this review. And also I had to come up with something in just two days before my holiday started. So I was a bit pressured and I just, I couldn't get something nice on paper until finally after the fifth try or something. Uh, it's just a basic kitty portrait, but. I always love drawing kitties, so sue me. <laughs> and after the sketch is done, I start doing the line art with my inking pen. I notice a lot of artists like to do the line art after they're done painting with gouache, but I like to do it beforehand because uh, gouache paint is quite opaque and all the pencil line art would uh, just disappear once painting and with the pen it's just still a little bit visible so it's easier for me to trace over after I'm done painting if lines get covered. Inking the line art is probably one of my favorite stages of doing a drawing because it is just so zen to do and I don't know I just like doing it. <laughs> when I'm doing line art I like to use a waterproof pen so the ink of the pen doesn't bleed into the paint once I'm painting over it. It's also very great uh, when using in combination with watercolor, transparent watercolor or uh, alcohol markers. So at this point in the video it's been three to four weeks until I opened this paint set for the first time. And I was curious to see how well preserved the paints were. 
during this time. If they were still as liquid as the day I opened them or if they had dried out a little bit. But it seemed that they were preserved perfectly. They were still as liquid as the day I opened them. Uh, just some colors had a little bit of the glycerin on top again. So all you have to do is stir them again and they're good to go. So yeah, this really, really impressed me. The lid does get on very tight, so I suppose it does preserve the paint for quite a long time. And I think when it starts to dry, you can revive it with water or glycerin. You can totally paint straight from the cups, but I chose to scoop some of the paint out onto a palette so it's easier for me to mix colors and to prevent the colors to contaminate each other in the cup. Also, I don't want the paint in the cups to dry out too fast so that after I scooped up the colors, I could close the box again. So, as always, I start by coloring the background first, as it sets the mood and helps me to determine what colors to use on the main subject for the shadows and highlights. Since this paint is quite opaque, I thought it was fun to try the cell shade cartoony style again for this illustration. So far, the paint lays down quite smooth and has a very lovely opaque yet bright color and mixes really nicely onto the palette but also on the paper. I could get quite smooth color gradients between the blue hues. Now I'm picking my colors for the main subject and mix them with each other. Also the white paint in the set did not disappoint. It was super opaque and it laid down very easily on top of darker colors. It made painting the clouds on top of the blue very very easy. Now I am using flat colors to block in the kitten. The dark brown color needed a couple of layers to lose the patches as it was quite a transparent color. I am using the finest round brush that came with the set. As the cat has a lot more detail, the fine brush worked best for that kind of job. The large round brush and the flat brush were ideal to use on the background. So far the brushes held up quite well as they soaked up water okay and retained their shape during the painting process and did not start to fray or lose hairs. They got the job done decently so I was quite impressed with them. 
I really fell in love with the pearl white color that came in this set that I am using here to block in the lighter fur of the kitty. It had a nice creamy warm grey hue, perfect for this fur color I had in mind for the kitten. Considering this set only cost 19.99 US dollars, which is about 17 euros on Amazon, I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of the paints in terms of how smooth they are to work with, how beautiful and vibrant the colors are and the gorgeous matte finish in the entire piece. I did not spot one shiny spot anywhere. These paints remind me so much of poster color paints, both in packaging and ease to use. Of course the light fastness is questionable, but then most gouache and poster paints are not known to be light fast as they were mainly used for illustrations, posters and cartoon animation industry. Never really for mu museum quality art. In their leaflet they do recommend you to use glycerin instead of water to thin down your paint, with as too much water can cause your paint to crack. But I had no glycerin so I used water anyway to thin my paint down and to mix my colors. I wasn't painting in too thick layers so I had no problems using water during the painting process. The mixes on the palette did crack when the paint dried, but that was okay. The paint reactivates very easily anyway on the palette once dried. Also, when you layer colors over another on paper, make sure that the layers underneath are completely dry and that your paintbrush is not too wet, as the paint lifts easily and gets reactivated easily. I found a couple of times when I tried to paint the shadows on top of the base colors that the paint lifted and dragged when I tried to paint over an area that wasn't fully dried. But when dry, you can paint colors on top of each other nicely and cleanly. So far I only tried this cel shade technique with acrylic paint markers as they are permanent, but I found I could do this technique without too much of a hassle with these water soluble paints. I did use a white Posca pen to draw in the delicate whiskers, but also to see if I could use acrylic paint markers on top of the dried layers of paint. And it worked beautifully, as long as you draw quickly and don't wait too long for the paint underneath to re-wet. Also, I could use my inking pens without any problems on top of the dried layers of paint to redraw some lines that were covered with paint. So, I have to say I really loved working with these paints and think they really are a great gouache paint for how cheap they come and can fully and honestly recommend them to anyone from beginner to professional illustrators. They really give you a bang for your buck. Even the brushes performed better than I expected. I honestly can't think of anything negative to say about these paints. I just really really like them and they performed above what I was expecting them to be. My only concern is about how fast these will dry out and if you can re-wet them when they do. And we are at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And by the way, I will leave a link below for these paints so you can check them out if interested. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss out on future content. Thank you all for watching and for now enjoy some kitty cuteness. Have a good one!